Hi, everybody. Our group will be doing our grand theory presentation on Dr. Jean Watson. Jean Watson was born July 21st, 1940, and grew up in a small town in West Virginia where she was the youngest of eight children. At the age of 16, she lost her father, which inspired her to attend nursing school. In 1962, she met her husband and moved to his home state of Colorado. There are several events that occurred in Jean Watson's life that have influenced her. In 97, she was in a golfing accident and lost her eye, and the following year, her husband committed suicide. Watson feels that these major life events helped her understand her work as a nurse at another level, and that through her suffering, she has been able to build her theory. After attending nursing school in West Virginia, Watson continued her education at the University of Colorado and received her bachelor's. Two years later, she earned her master's in psychiatric mental health nursing with a minor in psychology, and by 1973, she obtained her PhD in educational psychology and counseling. Watson's CV is lengthy and quite impressive. She began as an operating room nurse, transitioned to psychiatric nursing, then expanded her role in psychiatric nursing as a nurse therapist. In 1986, while working at the School of Nursing at the University of Colorado, Watson and her colleagues established the nation's first interdisciplinary Center for Human Caring. In 2008, the nonprofit Watson Caring Science Institute was created, where Watson was the founder and director. I've included more of Watson's academic career here. As you can see, it is quite extensive. She has retired from most of her roles, but remains on the board of many organizations. The complete 72-page CV of Jean Watson can be found at the link on the bottom of this slide. As author and co-author of over 30 books on caring, her latest books range from empirical measurements and international research on caring to new postmodern philosophies of caring and healing. Her books have received American Journal of Nursing's Book of the Year Award and seek to bridge paradigms as well as point towards transformative models for this 21st century. As for influencers, in 1988, Wonset reported that Nightingale and Rogers influenced her to develop her theory. She used concepts and philosophies from work done by psychologists Georgie, Johnson, and Koch to develop her theory. She realized there were conceptual and empirical problems in nursing and a need to enhance transpersonal interaction, nurse-patient engagement during interactions, and promote health, wellness, and restore health. Her theory is supported by other theorists from various disciplines, including Martha Rogers, Abraham Maslow, and Eric Erickson supported the nursing education to incorporate holistic knowledge from multidisciplinary integrating arts, sciences, and humanity. She believed that healthcare is becoming more complex and that nurses need to be educated by multidisciplines to provide a humanistic patient care. Watson being born in 1940 enabled her to live through many historic events that influenced her theory, including World War II, the Civil Rights Movement, the Supreme Court ruling that banned segregated seating, and women's rights movements. As we have seen, Jean Watson was well-educated in nursing philosophies, concepts, and psychology. This background was among the key factors that influenced her to create her theory, which is the theory of human caring. Her goal is to distinguish nursing science as a separate entity from medical science. The theory was developed in 1975 and first published in 88. In 2005, her nursing curriculum in human caring became a doctor of nursing practice degree. In the theory of caring, caring provided by nursing promotes health and wellness, prevents illness, and restores health better than only focusing on medical care. Because people, have more, because people are more than their illness, when a nurse cares for their patient, they are looking not primarily at what is physically happening within the body, but also at their spiritual being. A holistic approach to health care gives the patient a hand in gaining control on their health. Watson's role of a nurse includes creating a caring relationship, displaying unconditional acceptance, applying a holistic treatment approach, which includes treating the mind, soul, and spirit, as well as the body, take time to have uninterrupted moments with the patients referred to as caring moments, and use knowledge and intervention to promote health and healing. Oops. According to Watson, nursing is a caring profession, and since care is defined as a process of helping others grow, it is necessary to demonstrate how to help the bio, psycho, socio, and spiritual potentials of human growth. 
Health equals harmony of the body, mind, and soul. As a high level of physical, mental, and social performance, healing means regaining wholeness, which is a new, different, and better state than the one in which a patient was in previously. Person has three dimensions of mind, body, and soul. The human caring theory gives much importance to the spiritual rather than the physical dimension of human beings and emphasizes the self-transcendence and self-actualization of the nurse in caring experiences. Finally, the internal and external factors that help a person actualize his or her inner power of self-healing are called the environment. Here we have the major concepts of the science of human caring. According to Watson, a human being is a valued person to be cared for, respected, understood, and assisted. Health is unity and harmony within the mind, body, and soul. Nursing is defined as a human science of persons and human health illness experiences that are mediated by medical professionals. Actual caring occasion involves actions and choices by the nurse and the individual where they can decide how to be in the relationship. Transpersonal human-to-human -human relationship where the nurse affects and is affected by the person. The phenomenal field is totality of the human experience of one's being in the world. Self regards to I or me, characteristics and their relationships to others and to various aspects of their life. Time signifies the past, present, and future incidents merging and fusing. These concepts are related in this nursing theory through human interactions that seek to embrace the spirit or soul of the other human being through the process of caring, healing, and being authentic. The core of the theory of human caring is that humans cannot be treated as objects and that humans cannot be separated from self, other nature, and the larger workforce. Her theory encompasses the whole world of nursing with the emphasis placed on the interpersonal process between the caregiver and the recipient. This model depicts the inner workings of the person, nursing, health, and environment, and how they interact with one another when care is being provided. The theory of caring is applied through 10 carative factors, also called caritas, which serve as a blueprint for nursing practice. They involve the nurse engaging in his or her emotions in the caring process, spiritual experiences, as well as the physical and health needs. These carative factors are embrace, inspire, trust, nurture, forgive, deepen, balance, co-create, minister, and open. The first three factors form the philosophical foundation for the science of caring, and the remaining seven come from that foundation. Watson Caritas Patient Score is a reliable and valid instrument used in hospitals and systems throughout the U.S. The instrument contains five critical caring questions to assess the authentic human caring practices and has a seven-point Likert scale. Examples of the Caritas scorecards have been provided, as well as a link that contains the scale psychometrics for the instrument. Additionally, clinical nurses and academic programs throughout the world use her published works on the philosophy and theory of human caring. It is used to guide transformative models of caring and healing practices for hospitals, nurses, and patients in diverse settings worldwide. In addition to the carative factors, Watson suggests several ways to apply the theory in a care setting. She believes that by shaking the patient's hand, paying attention to the patient's family, making eye contact, explaining procedures, making the patient's environment more comfortable, and attempting to meet the patient's needs and wants, we're able to promote caring. Here's a case study where we can apply Watson's theory. Mr. Knight presented to the ER secondary to an acute exacerbation of COPD. He reports an inability to breathe and can't get comfortable no matter how he positions himself. The weather outside is 30 degrees Fahrenheit and he appears to be lightly dressed and shivering. In applying Watson's theory, we would focus on three priorities for caring. We want to make the patient comfortable by warming him up and repositioning him and also applying oxygen. This action demonstrates human caring and helps develop a nurse-patient relationship to make the patient feel comfortable and safe in a stressful environment. Providing emotional support and promoting communication facilitates building, helping a trust relationship and a nurse-patient relationship. We want to emotionally support him and be empathetic towards his difficult situations. By asking Mr. Knight about his beliefs, he feels safe and talks about them openly, whether spiritual or not. The nurse would incorporate these beliefs into his care plan, making the patient feel unique. 
Being in a safe environment helps satisfy the patient's psychological needs related to Maslow's hierarchy. Finally, we will assess his knowledge by having him verbally confirm understanding the situation. Waiting for the patient to verbalize back promotes openness in conversation and provides safety. Addressing Mr. Knight's ability to comprehend his illness and talk about his life without judgment improves his self-esteem and self-actualization, which are at the core of human caring. In order to determine the theory's testability, we found a research study which focuses on the high anxiety levels that nurses' students face. The study examined the effects of Watson's theory on clinical education programs on coping and anxiety levels of nursing students. The study was a single blind, randomized control trial conducted with nursing students from a university in Turkey. There was a total of 102 students, 51 in the intervention group and five in the 51 in the control group. The instructors used standard guidelines in accordance with Watson's human caring theory, where they applied clinical educational programs based on the 10 carative factors. Authentic relationships between the instructor and students were made during the study and appropriate solutions proposals were developed to assist the students in coping with the problems. In the control group, the instructors applied a routine clinical education program. As a form of measurement, the Spielberger State Trait Anxiety Scale and the Folkman and Lazarus's means of coping inventory was used to measure how the students cope with emotions and problems. The pretest results indicated that intervention and control groups were similar at the beginning of the study. In the post-test, the anxiety mean score of the intervention group was lower at a statistically significant level compared to the control group, where P was less than 0.001 and the mean score of the intervention group was significantly higher in the coping scale compared to the control group where P was less than 0.05. The findings of this study prove the positive effects of the application of the theory in human caring and promotes a change in the traditional education environments. This theory satisfies the criteria of parsimony and is concise yet comprehensive. It is simple in that it exhaustively explains the science of caring phenomenon and clearly describe the relationship between nursing and caring. Recent research found Watson's theory useful, but also stated that concepts in the theory are abstract and do not achieve full clarity and consistency. They believe that although language is clear and artful, their terminology needs to be more consistent because students and clinical nurses may not take the time to understand the theory due to its unfamiliar language. However, they do state the advantage of the theory's complexity is that it covers a wide range of phenomena in nursing, science, and art. The theory has attracted other researchers who have proposed mid-range theories concerning human caring. Kristen Swanson's mid-range theory of caring is used to define the care of patients as well as family members. The theory holds that caring proceeds in a sequence of five categories, knowing, being with, doing for, enabling, and maintaining belief. This theory emphasizes on the need for nurses to develop a caring culture characterized by excellent communication compassion, knowledge, optimism, reflection, concern, and commitment. The grand theory of human caring is widely accepted in the field of nursing, given its wide application in education, research, and practice. As an APRN, use of this theory is of high value and it will help us build stronger relationships, allow for patients better understandings of their health situations, and an understanding of the human as a whole. And here are our references. Thank you very much for listening in.